Hey, I'm live. I'm live. Live. I went on a little early. I was supposed to go on at 12:30. I've been on uh, tater tot duty, lunch duty. I'm a uh, part-time chef during the quarantine. What's up, everyone? How's it going? Uh, are you guys seeing this, by the way? I see the chat uh, since I had like a little waiting room. Mason Hunley says hello. So hopefully that's a hello to me saying that, yes, this is working. Can you guys hear me? Is this working? I moved my mic back a little bit. So is it too faint? Uh, what's up, everyone? Got 25 peeps in here, 12 thumbs up. Um, so yeah, I'm a little early. I'm 12 minutes early. Okay, I'm good. Move my mic back. So I have more room for my empty soda cans here. And uh, Jeff Garrity, I saw you in the chat. I, I came up here and I was gonna get ready for this thing and I saw there was a bunch of people in the chat. I got the box and I'm gonna open it here on this live stream. So I'm excited for that. Uh, I got some Marvel Legends. I was gonna open up all of these Marvel Legends that I got, but I'm gonna open up two of them. I got two WWE Elite. I got a box from Jeff. And then I got a box from Atomic Empire. And I'm really freaking excited about the box from Atomic Empire. Uh, so let's go. Let's go. What's good? Darren is here. There's a lot of people in here already. So let me see if I can catch up. Knight of Rand is here. Lord Luigi. Uh, Stuart Fulbrook is here. Rashad's here. Darth Goody. Matt Roy. Uh, Jeff Garrity, once again. And we've got Mason, Patrick Peluso, Clifton, Christian Arias, Benjamin Atienza, uh, Corey Knight is here. And we got Pedro Garcia, Darren Squire. Did I miss anyone? Friendly Neighborhood YouTuber. Liz is here. Ed is here. Lots of people are here. So let's go. Let's get started. Uh, so the two that I was going to open, I got these two. This is uh, Winter Soldier. Crossbones. I'm trying to remember where I got these. I think I got these from Hasbro Pulse, uh, as well as the other three, which are down here right now, which I'll probably open up on Wednesday's live stream. So I got these two. I got a couple of WWE Elite figures. Target. Bam. And I'll tell you what I'm doing with here in a second when I get to these, uh, because I decided to create some new shelves for WWE Elite figures. So I got Hurricane, this is actually the chase figure from what I understand because he's got white boots on. I think the one with the black boots is the non-chase figure. And then I got Booker, the five-time, five-time WCW championship. I didn't want to do it five times. Five-time, 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 five-time. But yes, there's Booker. Um, but I am going to tell you what I'm going to do with these. Because I have more WWE Elite figures coming, and there's a common theme between them. I got a box from Jeff, box from Jeff, and then I got this. Oh Lord, heavy, heavy box from Atomic Empire. There's a lot of stuff in here. I know what is causing most of the weight in here: bags and boards. But I'll show you all the goodness in there. I'm excited for that. I got to crack my soda open. Attitude Era, Benjamin Atienza wins the no prize. You are correct, sir. So I'll go ahead and tell you right now, since he already guessed it, I am going to create an Attitude Era shelf. So my current WWE shelves. So here's the plan. I'm going to buy some more Attitude Era figures. I'm going to create its own shelf. And then I'm going to do like a collection tour on just WWE Elite. I'm going to get back to regular videos. So just to let you know, this is probably going to be my last week of doing three live streams during the week. I'm going to go down to probably one live stream a week. I'm not sure if I'm going to do it Wednesday or Friday, probably Friday, but I'm going to get back to regular edited videos and I want to do some collection videos. I want to do some unboxings, toy hauls, stuff like that. So, um, so that's what I'm going to do. And I'm also going to be putting up a pretty fun video that we did. It's, uh, Whisper Challenge video that's going to go up on YouTube later on today. It's already on Patreon, so if you're a patron, you can view that now. We had a blast filming it. I laughed a lot, but um, yeah. So let me go ahead and open my Coke Zero. I got to down a couple of these uh, pieces of chocolate that I got here. I got some pieces of chocolate for the stream that I'm going to eat. One is a uh, mini Cadbury cream egg. The other one is a Reese's uh, egg. 
Willie's already losing his S, so there's probably another package out there. I mean, cream egg first. Easter. Happy Easter, everyone. So we got some Easter Bunny brought us some goodies. But let me go ahead and... There we go. I hate eating on camera. <laughs> but I got these specifically for this. All right, here we go. Yes, can't wait to see your new collections and haul videos. David says, your friendly neighborhood YouTuber, Attitude Arrow was the best ever. So yeah, Attitude Era. My goal eventually, as I continue to collect WWE Elite figures, my goal eventually is to have an entire detail with nothing but wrestling figures. <clears throat> I currently have two shelves right there right now with current WWE superstars and current NXT superstars. Obviously, when the AEW figures launch, I'm going to buy those. So I'll have a shelf of those. And then some Attitude Era figures, too. Throwing in for good measure. And then if we see more, like, Ruthless Aggression Era figures, some of the uh, Decade of Dominance figures that are coming out, like the Orton and the Cena, those are just, like, straight out of the Ruthless Aggression Era. Um, I missed out on the Hall of Fame. I think it was the Hall of Fame Batista figure, which was how he looked when he was running the show, when he was the man. Um, I think he was on... For a while there, if I can remember back, Cena, everyone was cheering Cena. He was still the word life basic economics character. Um, and then Batista was the other big draw. And those guys were basically running Raw and SmackDown. Everyone was going crazy for those guys. So um, I missed out on the Batista they did, which was kind of a recent figure, which was, uh, I think it was a Hall of Fame figure. So, But that's the plan. Have an entire detail full of wrestling figures. Good Lord. Dangerous uh, Danny Davis's legs right there. And his arms as well. I think I might be able uh, I think I might be able to build the dangerous Danny after Let's see the Foley? I still need the Foley. These things. Alright, so one more snippy snip. And then we can get Booker T out. I'm surprised he doesn't come with the WCW championship. That's kind of surprising to me. You'd think that that would be an easy... Come on. You'd think that that would be an easy accessory to throw in. These things. I need a new pair of these things. But they don't make them anymore. But they're freaking awesome. But my pair are jacked. This unboxing is a lot more involved than I was anticipating. All right, so here we go. Straighten all the limbs. There is Booker T. He was probably one of the first big WCW guys to invade the WWF um, after the WWF acquired WCW. Because they didn't sign a lot of the big talents, but Booker was one of the first ones that he invaded. I know DDP... He invaded also. I was really surprised. If For those of you that remember that storyline, if you've been watching wrestling for a long time, Undertaker's ex-wife Sarah had a stalker, and the stalker was unmasked. And um, we actually, my brother and I were in Tampa, Florida, when they, um, when they unmasked the stalker, and it was DDP. And my brother was kind of new to wrestling at the time, so I freaked out when they revealed that it was DDP. But uh, my brother was like, I don't understand what's going on here. So I had, I had to explain everything to him and explain that guy is from the rival promotion. He's from WCW. So my brother was like, oh, okay. And that's, that time is like when my brother kind of got hooked on wrestling uh, with all the different storylines. I updated him on everything, how WCW and WWE used to be like rivals. But there you go. This is an awesome figure right here. He comes with a few hands. A little pointing hand, another pointing hand. He's got a hand that can hold a belt. And then he's got another five time WCW championship hand. And then it also comes with the Danny Davis legs, 
and then arms as well. But just to show you the detail on this one. He weird. He wearing like underwear. Well, most wrestlers, that's what they wear. What's up? <laughs> Look, I can't watch it. I won't watch oh, it. Oh, sorry. You're mean. Sorry about that, kiddo. He put restricted mode on my iPad. Now I can watch him live. Mm. But I can't comment. <coughs> All right. You got a pose booker about to do the spinner Rooney. I'll see what I can do with the pose. Um, he's got those big uh, knee pads, so they're kind of hard to bend his knees very much. But I'll see what I can do. I might have him just holding the hand up, staring at the hand, doing the five time. I kind of need the belt. I do have an extra belt, so I'll probably put that on him as well. But. There you go, guys. There's the first unboxing. What's a spinner rooney? It's a little um, move. It's kind of like a breakdancing move where you spin on your back and your legs go up in the air. And then he, Oh, yeah. Yeah. But he calls it the spinner rooney. It's, it's called the backspin, I think, is the actual spin name. Rooney. Have you looked into Ace Toys Power Rangers? No, I'm, uh, I'm collecting. If you could see right there. Let's see if you could see right there. I redid my uh, shelf for the lightning collection. I took all of the rangers off their dynamic stands. And I have them all in kind of uh, museum poses, uh, the kind of the same pose, all the rangers there. And then all the bad guys are behind them in jumping dynamic poses now. So uh, let's see, Ionicus, how, hey, TT, how was your Easter? Good. She got lots of good stuff from the Easter lots, Bunny. Lots and lots and lots of art stuff. Lots of art stuff. And she, I'm doing it right now. She's really into art stuff right now. So she got lots of art stuff. Uh, P-Dog got a Barbie, Barbie, a Cookie Swirl C Barbie, so a YouTuber Barbie. Um, and then you got lots of art stuff, yeah. a book by Mariah Elizabeth, yeah. her favorite YouTuber. <laughs> and uh, you got lots of paint stuff, so. Lots, lots of, lots of, lots of paint. Why are you? There's my eat? egg. Why is it in there? Because I'm going to eat it. Why don't you just eat it right now? Because I don't want to touch it with my hands, because I've been touching boxes. I'll eat it. No, it's, I'm going to be eating it. I'm just not going to touch it. Just eat it. Uh, yes, uh, Gian Garcia, I do like Transformers. Absolutely. Okay, bye. bye. Peace. Toodles. Toodles. I have a whole detail case of Transformers right there. Am I the only one who wants a sideshow life-size scale Babu Frick? I actually watched uh, Rise of Skywalker yesterday, and, uh, and uh, I like Babu Frick. I thought he was kind of funny. Have you seen The Big Bang Theory? It's probably one of my favorite shows ever, uh, Corey. Yeah, I've seen I've seen probably 98% of all the episodes of Big Bang Theory. I love that show. What are some good figures of Undertaker and Stone Cold? Those are my two favorite wrestlers. Knight of Ren, I would wait because the Ultimate Collection, basically WWE Elite does what's called the Ultimate Collection now. And it's a super articulated elite figure. It has double jointed elbows and stuff, uh, multiple head sculpts, uh, multiple accessories. And they, it's basically two figures in each wave. And the figure is like an old timer or like a legend or someone that used to wrestle. And then also a current wrestler. So I would say wait because they've done Shawn Michaels, Triple H, Bret Hart. Uh, they're going to do a Stone Cold. They're going to do an Undertaker um, in the Ultimate Collection. So I would just say wait. Daddy? Yeah. Can I put this in the fridge and eat and drink it? No, that's mine, right? Yeah. Yeah, you go ahead. You can have it. <gasps> Yay! 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 More vitamin yeah. water for me! <laughs> Someone got the child Black Series figure in hand. Looks good. Looks really with the other Mandalorian Black Series figures. Yeah, I can't wait for that one. I'm looking forward to that one. I'm going to buy two. The Yoda. Yep, you're going to get one. Don't worry. <gasps> Yay! Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, and then, yes, The Rock is also being done. Amateur Toy Hunter, a good call on that one. Uh, let's see. 124 people in here, 52 thumbs up. I'm going to go ahead and unbox Bucky. So I got Winter Soldier here. Current favorite Marvel legend uh, of the year or in my entire collection? Of the year, it's probably... Um, Probably Red Hulk or Monster Venom, although I really do like that deluxe uh, Black Widow, the movie one, the $30 one with the stand, the awesome stand. I really, really like that figure a lot. Uh, in my entire collection, that's tough. 
I really like the Archangel. Um, really, that's the re recent deluxe Archangel. I love that figure. I think that might be one of my favorites in my entire collection. Bucky, I didn't show you the box art. So we got uh, Winter Soldier. This is in the Black Widow wave. There's the box art right there. And side art right there. Can I tell who the artist is? I cannot tell who that artist is, but I've seen their artwork before. And then you got, there's the other figures in the wave. I will tell you right now that I have all of them except for two of them right now. And um, I'm probably going to be picking up the Spy Master and Red Guardian soon, but I have all the others. But um, here, can you show us your X-Men display? Yeah, when I do the um, when I get back to regular edited videos, I'm gonna do an updated Marvel Legends collection uh, or display tour. Since I have a lot of figures that are not currently on display, I have uh, a full bin of Marvel Legends figures that I just don't have room for. But I'll show you my current display when I do that video. But uh, here is the Winter Soldier, and I'm just taking a look at him right now. And this is, it looks like he has the same legs as the uh, recent Punisher figure. But um, I originally, when I saw pictures of this, I thought that the face sculpt and the hair looked a little dull. But now that I have it in hand, and you can actually see the contours of the face, the sculpt, in the, the face sculpt, you can actually see like cheekbones and like there's a little line there where he has like very defined like cheekbones. Uh, I really, really like this sculpt a lot. So I'm glad that I picked it up. Uh, but let me show you. So here he is. Here's Winter Soldier. Let's see if I can get you close in on the head. It's not going to focus. But um, if you get this figure in hand, you'll see what I'm talking about, about the, like the sculpting on the face. Uh, it does look a lot better than it does uh, on the internet like in pictures, much, much better. You could see like little sculpts of the forehead wrinkles. Uh, so it just looks so much better in person, in hand versus how it looked online. But let me just show you here. So this is cool because uh, previous Winter Soldier figures, I know there was one. So Toys R Us a long time ago did a two pack. It was a Bucky and a Black Widow. And there was two versions. One of them had a Black Widow in a black outfit and Bucky. And the other one had the same Bucky figure except a different symbol on his shoulder and a Black Widow in gray. So I think this is the one that came with the Black Widow in gray. But there's the little symbol on his shoulder. He used to have, when he was uh, the evil Winter Soldier in the Captain America comic books, he had like a red star on his shoulder. But when he uh, turned good, and became a hero, he uh, changed it to that red, white, and blue star. So pretty cool there that they did that one there for the shoulder. But this is a pretty awesome looking figure. Um, good ab crunch, bicep cut, double jointed elbows, wrist joint, uh, double jointed knees, just the typical articulation that you would see. Good ankle movement there, and he's got rocker. But um, this is awesome. And what I was going to do with uh, this is make a Captain America shelf. So this is going to go on a shelf with the uh, the new Target exclusive um, Black Widow in the white outfit. This is going to go on a shelf with Crossbones. Uh, obviously, Cap's going to go on that shelf. I'm probably going to get the comic book Red Guardian. That's going to go on the shelf. Um, any uh, major, I'm going to get some Hydra, some of the like uh, Army Builder Hydra figures, the 1499 Hydra figures that are on Hasbro Pulse. Those are live right now, by the way. Uh, you can buy those for $14.99. I'm going to get some of those. Um, who am I missing? Red Skull, obviously. So yeah, it's going to be an all cap shelf. I'm really looking forward to it, but uh, I really, really like this Winter Soldier. He comes with this gun right here. And then he comes with this gun right here. And then he comes with the head of this version of Crimson Dynamo. So pretty cool there. But uh, just to show you some of the sculpt work on here, the details. None of that stuff on the uh, belt can be removed, but it's just, it looks really good. 
the gun in the holster there, the knife in the back, the uh, clips or magazines in the leg thing there. Pretty awesome looking figure. I like this a lot. So let's get back to the comments here. Um, let's see. Cosmic Ghost Rider is the top Marvel legend for me. Uh, your friendly YouTube, friendly neighborhood YouTuber says that. That is a great, great figure. I like that one a lot. Um, Lewis Melly is here. I have a 3.75 Indiana Jones from 2008 coming from eBay tomorrow. So pumped to get it. I hope a figure line comes back with new Indiana Jones movie. That would be awesome. Uh, I want a six inch Indiana Jones uh, with like the new digital face printing technology for like Temple of Doom, Raiders of the Lost Ark. I want all the looks of Indiana Jones. I want the Sean Connery from Last Crusade. I want a River Phoenix figure from Last Crusade. Um, a short round from Temple of Doom. Um, I forgot her name, but Kate Capshaw's character from Temple of Doom. I want all the characters from all the Indiana Jones movies. Those are some of my favorite movies ever. I love the Indiana Jones movies. So yes, that would be awesome if we got... Um, Six inch versions, detailed versions of Indiana Jones figures. That would be freaking awesome. Is the Rhino Wave Ghost Rider a good figure? Thinking about picking one up off of eBay. I think that figure is very expensive. So we can get it for cheap, then it's a good uh, buy. But um, there's a more recent Marvel Legends Riders version that came with the bike. And I think, is that the same sculpt, just a different paint job? Someone let me know in the chat, is is the Riders version that came, the Johnny Blaze Ghost Rider that comes with the motorcycle that came out, I think it was last year, is that the same sculpt as the uh, one that came out in the Rhino Wave? I think it is. But I think you can get that for a better deal than the one that was from the Rhino, Rhino Wave. Uh, if you can only choose one scale to collect, which would it be? Oh, that's a tough question. Uh, Kanji Club asked that. That is a tough question because obviously I'm into 12-inch figures with the Hot Toys. I'm into, can't see it right now, but I'm into 3.75-inch figures with the G.I. Joes and Star Wars. I'm into 6-inch figures, obviously. That is a tough, tough call. And then obviously I have some 7-inch figures too with NECA, Turtles and stuff. I would probably... I'd probably go for the the 12 inch figures, the one six scale. If I had to get rid of everything except for one scale, yes, I would choose that. And it would suck that I wouldn't be able to have this collection anymore, but I really love my hot toys. So every time I get a new hot toy, it's like Christmas morning uh, because my new hot toys now, I used to get a lot of them. If you watch me like years previously, I used to come home from comics to games with like hauls of hot toys. I've really limited which ones I buy, how many I buy, because they're so expensive and they set me back a lot. And if I get a new hot toy, that's two to 300 to 400 to $500. That's not going to be purchasing stuff like this that I also love. So that's why I've become so selective on hot toys. And that's why uh, you just don't see a whole lot of uh, new hot toys in my collection, but I still love them very much. Uh, let's see. Night of Ren says Raiders of the Lost Ark. Oh, I just jumped. I, I think it said Raiders of the Lost Ark is his favorite indie movie. If I was to pick one Indiana Jones movie to be my favorite, it would probably be Temple of Doom. I just love that movie. Um, and I like Last Crusade next and then Raiders of the Lost Ark. And I love Raiders of the Lost Ark, but I love those two movies more. Winter Soldier and Snake Eyes comparison. I can do that if I can find Snake Eyes. By the way, I'm rocking a, this is my newest jersey. This is another addiction that I have in collecting hockey jerseys, authentic hockey jerseys. This is the Carolina Hurricanes based in Raleigh, North Carolina, where I plan to eventually move and live. Number 37, if you're a hockey fan, you'll know that that is Andre Svechnikov. The number two overall pick in the, was it 18 draft? There you go. Um... See if I can get them on the same. Pretty bad it's right there. If I was going to go into battle, I would not mind having these two guys on my side. Bucky and Snake Eyes. Freaking awesome. Look at that. 
this Snake Eyes figure. This is a contender for my favorite toy of the year so far. So freaking awesome. I love this figure. And then uh, once again, there's Bucky. So let me get to some more questions, comments, the chat, and then I will open up the box from Jeff, and then I will open up the crossbones, and then I'll end with the Atomic Empire unboxing. Where's my Philly jersey, Michael Taylor asks. It's down in the closet. I, uh, I think I wore that recently. I'm trying to figure out which ones I have and have not worn for these uh, live streams. I knew I hadn't worn this because it's brand new. So Art just got a Snake Eyes, uh, just got a Snake Eyes pre-ordered the wave too. Awesome, Art. I got the entire wave except for Scarlet pre-ordered. I just want to see Scarlet in hand because um, before I buy it. Jordan Nantai says he's nuts at the lacrosse goal. Yeah, his lacrosse style goal was freaking amazing. Um, Philip Forsberg had a couple good ones too, but Svechnikov, I think Svechnikov's had two lacrosse style goals. For those that are not hockey fans, a lacrosse style goal, the puck is usually on the ice. Svechnikov pops the puck onto a stick, lifts it in the air, and then throws it over the goalie's shoulder. So the puck is literally just, he's behind the net when he's doing it, and he's just doing that, and the puck is just going right over the goalie's shoulder into the goal. And it's not a high sticking because it's its not—it's at shoulder height, I think. How many jerseys do you have? A lot. I haven't counted, uh, but I have a lot. I'm going to do, uh, for the Rip and Pucks channel, I'm going to do a jersey collection tour. Uh, so that'll be a video. If you're a hockey fan or you like hockey, uh, check that one out when it does come out. No way he does that against Carey Price. Oh, yeah, because Carey Price is very tall. Um, I don't remember which goalies he did that against, but let me go ahead and um, I'm going to open the Jeff box. Jeff Garrity sent me this box, and uh, Mrs. Cincy recently picked it up for me at the post office. So I'm going to open this up. I honestly don't remember what was in here. Um, oh, I opened it up from the bottom, so I'm, I'm kind of getting a sneak peek of what's in here. Holy moly. There's some stuff in here. All right, here we go. So Jeff, holy ass. Yes. I was trying to look for this in the store, and I could not find it. Thundercats Classics. This is like a Hot Wheels. Is it Hot Wheels? Yeah, it is Hot Wheels Premium. The Thunder Tank. Badass. That's awesome. That's so freaking cool. For those that don't know, I do have uh, Hot Wheels. I have a small collection of Hot Wheels, mostly like uh, cars from like movies and cartoons and TV shows and stuff. So this is right up my alley, as is this. Hell yes, the Wind Raider. I actually have a Wind Raider right there. So this is very, very cool. This is a stand on card because I love that card art. But this is the Masters of the Universe Wind Raider Hot Wheels. Look at that art. He-Man, who else is on there? Can't tell, they're two small images, but this is badass. So two freaking awesome Hot Wheels cars there. What else is in here? Oh, freaking cool. So a little bobblehead thing, because I love the thing. And the thing is actually another one of my favorite figures of the year, the Marvel Legends thing. So there's a little thing. I can make a little thing family. I'll have the thing with his two sons, Thang and Thung. <laughs> there's there's another another uh, little thing. <laughs> so there's the two little two little dude things. What's this? What? Hold on. All right. So let me take this out. Oh, sweet! This is another one I couldn't find. There's a letter in here too. I was looking for this damn thing. So this is the Optimus Prime. This is the Jada Toys die cast Optimus Prime. This is freaking awesome. This is coming out of the box, and I'm going to have this next to my MP10, and I'm going to have the uh, alt version of Optimus Prime next to the robot version of Optimus Prime. This is beautiful right here. So there's that. Jada Toys. They should make, like... Multiple Transformers alt vehicles with that packaging, those things will sell. And then here is oh, sweet! 
So there's Slash. I do not have this one yet. This is my first video game turtle. So I didn't know anything that was in here. Um, this is all a surprise to me. So I was uh, going to start a new shelf of video game turtles. Um, there's that first wave out with Slash. <clears throat> and then there's Donatello and Leonardo. And they come with a little uh, surfboard things. But um, And then the Foot Soldier also. But this is my first one. So this will be the first one. I'm going to have to move the Rangers somewhere because my video, I have all, those are all NECA turtles right there. I've got the comic book version, the cartoon version, the movie version, and then I'm now going to have video game version. Freaking awesome. Thank you, Jeff. This is so freaking cool. I love it. And this was the one that I wanted the most. Every time I go in or every time I went into Dallas Vintage Toys, um, when they were still open before this whole thing happened, I would have this in my hand. And then I would find other stuff and I'd be like, ah, they got a bunch of them. I'll get it later. And I would put it back on the shelf. So this is awesome. Very, very cool. Slash. NECA Slash. That's badass. I can't wait to unbox that. Um, so very, very cool. That was an awesome unboxing. I'm going to go ahead and read this real quick. Hey, Cincy, hope you and your family are all healthy and enjoying your time together, even though this isn't the best way to bring family closer. I started collecting over a year ago and have built up a nice collection so far. I find that the stores here in mass seem to get stuff after everyone else, but it keeps the hunt exciting. I'm 45 years old and enjoy Marvel, DC, Transformers, NECA, comic books, and other stuff. So same stuff that I'm into. It's great to see that even at our age, we get so excited over toys. You just saw how excited I was over toys. So yes, this is awesome. Uh, anyway, I wanted to send you a little package to thank you for all you're doing uh, to educate and inform us about toy collecting. You're a fun guy to watch. Please stay safe and God bless you and your family. God bless and you. God bless you and your family, Jeff. I know uh, you suck at transforming Transformers, so don't worry. The one in the box is non-transforming. If you ever come up to Boston, look me up. Best wishes, Jeff Garrity. Hell yes. I love Boston. Um, I actually went there for Mrs. Cincy, uh, and I went up there for my birthday, and I think it was 2009, and we did a uh, Fenway Park tour. We went up on the Big Green Monster. Um, we went to, uh, was it Faneuil Hall? It's been a while since we've been there. I went to a comic book shop at Faneuil Hall and bought a Sideshow Snake Eyes figure. Actually, Mrs. Cincy bought me that for my birthday when we were there. Um, I freaking love Boston. I want to go back there. Definitely. So yeah, hell yes. So awesome. Uh, what am I going to do next? I'm going to look at the chat and then I'm going to open up crossbones. I might save uh, the hurricane for the next episode because I'm at 33 minutes and I got a lot to show you from this atomic empire box. So there we go. Uh, the slash looks so dope. Yes, it does. David, it looks freaking awesome. I can't wait to, uh, make a video game shelf now. Um, awesome Optimus Prime from Jada. Pedro Garcia says, I doubt the thing will go up in in price anytime soon, but I don't know about the She-Hulk, uh, Kato says. Which figure, Kato, are you talking about? Crossbones is nice. They must release a middle-aged mutant ninja turtle line. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, I want to do Turtles in Time, but trying to hold off. We'll see if they go down. For now, I'll stick to the cartoon series. They look cool, though. Honestly... I'm, I'm all in with everything NECA does turtle-wise. I freaking love the turtles so much. I grew up watching the turtles. I grew up reading the comic book. I, I got so excited for uh, everything that came out from the toy line to the initial movie in 1990. I was there. I was 14 years old when the movie came out. I watched the cartoon. I was there for the issue one of the, the Archie comic book that came out, the Archie line comic book. I've just been a Turtles fan from a, for a long, long time now. So I'm all in. Uh, NECA knows how to do it. I will say that. They did a WWE Turtles line. They did. They did, a, I think, a Ghostbusters Turtles line, too. I don't see that thing going up, but maybe the Walgreens. I don't know. Um, oh, you, you guys are talking about Thing, I think. Uh, hey, from Houston. What's up, Bubba French? What is your favorite horror franchise? Oh, man. Is uh, I don't think Alien is considered a horror franchise. It's more sci-fi. Um, I really like the the It movies. I was never big on Nightmare on Elm Street. I was never big on Friday the Thirteenth. Um, what else? 
I kind of like, um, but they changed the theme. I like Army of Darkness, but that's not really a horror movie. That's more like a comedy adventure. I'll have to think about that. I'm not sure. Um, I do love horror movies, but I'm kind of selective on which ones. I Like one of my favorite ones is An American Werewolf in London. That's one of my favorite. I love Cabin in the Woods. I love um, Cabin Fever. Eli Roth, that was a good one. Um, what other horror movies? I'm going to have to think about that. You guys always ask me the tough questions when I'm live. Here's Crossbones. Someone, um, I forgot who it was, but someone in the last, in the comments, I think, in the last live stream recommended taking the vest off of Rage uh, by popping off at the biceps and taking the vest off and putting it on this figure. And he said it looked awesome. Um, I really like the way this looks. I was um, a big collector of the entire Ed Brubaker uh, line of Captain America comic books. I read all those Brubaker books, and uh, this is how I remember Crossbones looking. I know everyone loves the big armored up, vested up, freaking holding a Gatling gun, Thunderbolts look, but honestly, in the comic book, in uh, the Captain America Brubaker run comic book, which is the Brubaker run in Captain America is by far my personal opinion, the best Captain America stories ever written. So if you're looking, if you want to buy, um, I, I remember Bibby the Pop Hunter asked me, hey, I want to buy some comics. I think I recommended the Brubaker run to, to him. Uh, that was where we first saw Winter Soldier. Up until that point, there was no Winter Soldier. Uh, Bucky was dead and, and he was long forgotten. So Brubaker, I have such a tough time saying his name, Brubaker, uh, brought him back to life as the Winter Soldier. So we have to thank him for such an awesome movie, Captain America, the Winter Soldier. But anyway, what I was getting at is this is how I see Crossbones in my mind. This is how he looked in the comic book. I would love if they did a, a Sin figure. For those that are not aware, uh, that is um, Red Skull's daughter, Sin. And uh, she is ruthless and crazy. And she pals around with crossbones. So I'd love to see a sin figure that would look awesome on the Captain America shelf. So let's see here. The Brubaker cap run is amazing. Uh, the big little J says, uh, let's see. What is your favorite Marvel villain? Cincy Dr. Doom. Um, my runner up would be Magneto, but Dr. Doom I remember getting the Doctor Doom Secret Wars figure in like 85. And um, I just love the look of Doctor Doom. Uh, I love Doctor Doom. I like I love uh, Doctor Octopus. Green Goblin's always been one of my favorites. And then obviously Magneto's my favorite X-Men villain. But uh, Doom. Doom is the man. I want the 80 years cap, but he's like 30 bucks. Here's the thing about that figure. That figure looks great. I will say that it looks great. Uh, it has actual sculpted scales for his armor as opposed to the retro Marvel Legends figure, which is just a painted, it almost looks like fishnet. It kind of looks dumb. But I will say, um, side by side, the 80th Cap and then the Cat Wolf figure. Now, the Cat Wolf figure does not have the sculpted scales. He's a lighter blue. The 80th Cap is a dark blue. But if you put them next to each other, the 80th cap looks almost too thin. The cat wolf cap is big and bulky. And that's how, how I kind of picture Captain America in my head. He's a freaking super soldier. He should be jacked like Chris Evans in First Avenger when he first came out of that thing. Just looked like a freaking bodybuilder. And that's how I kind of imagine Captain America looking. So I wish they had gone with that big physique with that 80th cap. Because I look at the 80th cap and I think it looks great. But then I look at it next to Cap Wolf and I'm like, the Cap Wolf just kind of looks, I don't know, I, I like it more. So, so there you go. That's how I, what I think. Gucci uh, already has Cap Wolf. Um, I don't know. I kind of like the Cap Wolf look more. But here is Crossbones. <laughs> that is freaking awesome. I love these big ass guns that he has. It almost looks like it almost looks like a like a shotgun 
They're giant revolvers is what it looks like. But it looks like two like shotguns with the uh the this part I don't know what the name of the part of the gun is cut off. But there you go. What is Cap Wolf? Amateur Toy Hunter says that was a Captain America figure that was released in the was it the Apocalypse uh, Red Skull Apocalypse Wave? I don't remember what wave that was. But the reason he's called Cap Wolf is because there was another head that comes with that figure, which is a wolf head. Because in the 80s, there was a storyline where Cap turned into a wolf. Gucci, thank you. Red Skull Onslaught is that wave. And thank you, Knight of Ren. Uh, Salacious Chrome, what's up to you? Uh, Crossbones, that's what's up. Freaking awesome. Very, very cool. So double jointed knees. He has a cut at the boot, which I love. That's cool. And then he also has very good ankle articulation there. And he's got rocker. And he's got two holsters. The big uh, complaint on this figure, other than the fact that he's not all jacked with freaking gear and vest and armor, is these little silver guns, which I will never pose him with in his hands. They're just going to go in the little holsters and they're going to stay there. So it adds a little something to the holsters for me. This is how I'm going to have them with these two freaking awesome looking giant revolver guns. That look like shotguns to me, uh, but he looks very, very cool. I really like this figure. So awesome. So two awesome figures uh, and two figures to start my cap shelf with, with Captain, well, not with Captain America, with uh, Crossbones and Winter Soldier. And the uh, Crossbones came with this arm and I like this arm because these little blue parts here, if you can see, are translucent plastic. So that's really, really cool. I love that added detail. And I will more than likely build this Build-A-Figure. I was only going to buy these two figures at first. Then I started seeing... So I was only going to buy these two figures. And then I saw that Black Widow, the Target exclusive one, or not a Target exclusive, the deluxe one with the stand, the amazing stand. And I got that in hand, and I was like, this is an amazing figure. Made me want to buy some of the other movie figures, which are down there, which I'm going to save for Wednesday. Um, and then when I got these, I'm like, I might as well finish the damn bath. I looked up Spy Master and saw that he was actually a uh, pretty prominent Iron Man villain in the 80s. So I actually bought a comic book, and it arrived today. Uh, from Duncanville Bookstore on one of the live sales. I only got it for $3. But it's the second ever appearance of Ghost. Remember Ghost from the Ant-Man movie? Ghost started as an Iron Man villain. And I have the, it was a, I think a two or three issue run where a ghost first appeared. And it's the second overall appearance of Ghost, but on the cover is Spy Master. So um, I got that book. I'm like, oh, it's second parents of ghost, three bucks. Can't beat that. It's in great condition. It's from like 88 or 89 or something. I don't remember. But it also features Spy Master. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to get that figure. And the only other one is the damn, the only one other one that I don't have, which I still need to get, is the David Harbour uh, Red Guardian. And from what I hear, uh, I was watching the Foosh and Robo said that people are selling uh, like sculpts for a new head for that figure. So that's what I might do because I don't like the head on that figure, but the rest of the figure looks decent. So if I can find a new head with the long hair and the long scraggly beard, maybe even one with the helmet on, hell yeah. If I can find it painted, because I can't paint worth a damn, then I'm going to get that, put it on that figure, and that'll be um, how it looks. So, enough babbling. Let's see here. Cincy, what's the best articulated Hulk Hogan is the best action figure? Um, I couldn't tell you. I don't know the best Hulk Hogan articulated figure. I do know that Storm Collectibles does a couple Hulk, Hulk Hogan figures, which you can find for pretty damn cheap now. Uh, and they look really good. And they're big. Gucci says David Harbour is a good actor. I think he's a great actor. Um, I think he's awesome on Stranger Things. I can't wait for the next season of that. The Thing or Escape from New York? 
Oh, okay. So Ionicus is asking me, do I like the movie The Thing? John Carpenter's The Thing, not it's clobber in time thing, but John Carpenter's The Thing or Escape from New York. I got to go with Escape from New York because I'm a big Kurt Russell fan. Uh, I do like, and Kurt, isn't Kurt Russell in The Thing also? I think he is, but I like Escape from New York. I like that movie a lot. Uh, can you believe 2020 is the first year since 2010 we won't have Chris Evans appear as Cap in a new MCU movie? We don't know that. He might have a cameo in the Black Widow movie. We, we, I mean, that might happen. What Black Series figures are you looking forward to get uh, the Cincy? What Black Series figures? I just ordered Zori Bliss because uh, that looks awesome. And I did not know that the visor came off on that. That was a big surprise to find out. So Zori Bliss is on the way. I'm waiting for Dooku to go down in price. Um, and I'm going to order Dooku and I'm going to order, what was the other one from that wave? Um, Knight, Knight of Ren. Knight of Ren. Uh, I'm going to get that one too. I don't watch horror movies that much. I don't either. I mean, I'm pretty selective, but uh, there are some horror movies which I absolutely freaking love. Hey, since you don't know if you spoke on this, but what are your thoughts on the announced Mezco exclusive? Uh, the one, the uh, Dr. Benz, I think is, was his name. The He's part of the Rumble Society. It looks great. I think it looks awesome. I like what they're doing with their whole little world um, with Gomez and with the uh, Skull Club. Uh, but the only part that sucks is the fact that if you are you know, interested in getting into that line, it's uh, it costs you an arm and a leg to get the other figures in that wave now in the in the Rumble Society. So if you get that Doctor Benz, I mean he's going to be on a shelf by himself maybe um, because the Skull Club is up there in price. All the Gomez figures are up there in price. So that's the only kind of bad part. Baron Benz, thank you, Glenn. All right, so what do I have left? I got 13 minutes. I want to open this Atomic Empire box. Um, so let's do that. Oh, it's freaking heavy. So one of the things that's in here that's causing the weight is bags and boards because I needed more of those. But uh, for those that don't know, Atomic Empire is located in Durham, North Carolina. And I found them when the whole Corona thing started because I wanted to be able to get comics, but not go places. Um, and I found them. And the, one of the cool things about Atomic Empire is the fact that their website is so freaking interactive. Holy packaging. Their website is so interactive. When you order a new comic book, like let's say I'm going to subscribe to Thor, Donnie Kate's Thor. You subscribe to the comic and then it shows you like the next five issues of that comic that are coming out. And then you can select which cover and it shows you the cover and you can blow up the cover and you can select which cover. And that's freaking sweet. And they send you whichever cover you want. I think that's so cool. Their their website is ingenious. So here's my lengthy. There's all this stuff in here. So I I, uh, I was anticipating being at home quarantined for a while. So I I bought a few things. So here's my stack of books here. Here's what weighs so damn much. Boards. I got. Silver Age boards and Silver Age bags because, oh, there's another comic down there. Oh, I forgot about that one. Because I have uh, been buying some Silver Age books and 80s books and whatnot on online sales. So the modern age bags and boards fit very, very tight with um, Silver Age books. So that's why I got Silver Age bags and boards. 151 people in here. How's it going, everyone? Hopefully you're having a great day. Um, here's the comic that was in there. This is Joker, Killer Smile, book three. Look at that cover. So this is a black label book. I have the first two issues of this. But again, with this comic book, I cover I wanted. And this cover looks freaking amazing at this one. This is Jeff Lemire, Andrea Sorrentino, Jordi Belair. It's a larger size. It's like magazine sized. Uh, comic book, but pretty awesome. 
And then let me open up this. These are all comics here. They're all, all newer comic books. I do have a box that I just got from Duncanville Bookstore with older 80s stuff. So if you're into that kind of thing, check out. I'll probably do it on Wednesday. Check it out Wednesday, and I'll show you which books that I got. But I'm just going to run through these real quick. So uh, this is a book that I uh, picked up the first two issues of, and then I kind of forgot about it. I was going to uh, add it to my pull list, and I forgot about it. Honestly, that's what I did. And uh, so I picked up issue three of War of Realms, War of the Realms. This is basically like a Thor, Avengers, fan crossover. So there's issue three. I love this uh, cover right here. Issue four. Look at that cover. It's very Thor movie poster like. So there's issue four of War of the Realms. Issue five. Look at the cover art. That's awesome. And then I got the final issue, issue six. And that is the Arthur Adams cover. Beautiful. So I got uh, War of the Realms. I got um, Justice League 43. This was the last issue of Justice League to come out before Diamond kind of shut down. Uh, but this is the Eradicator storyline where he brings the Daxamites to Earth. And then I got uh, I got an itch right on my eyebrow. Suicide Squad. This is issue three. I'm really, really loving Suicide Squad right now. Uh, Tom Taylor is writing that. Excellent writer. Got X-Force. This is the most recent issue of X-Force to come out. And then we have... I gave this one a shot. I'm going to read the first issue, see if I like it. I have read this guy's stuff before. Um, he used to go by Dennis Hopeless. He's a right, comic book writer, but he now uses his actual real name, Dennis Hallam. This is Exo Man of War number one. Uh, Valiant character. Decided to give that a shot. Since it's the first issue, I'm going to see if I like it. And then here is the most recent issue of X-Men, issue nine. All the Summers family right there. Got Jean Grey, Cyclops, Havoc, Vulcan. Gladiator, Corsair, the Star Jammers. Pretty awesome. I like that cover. Uh, Wolverine number two. The new Wolverine comic book. Got Sabretooth and Lady Deathstrike. Who's the third character there? I can't tell who the third character is. Is that General Striker? I can't tell. And then we got Suicide Squad number four with a beautiful, beautiful cover. Look at that cover. Awesome looking cover there, Suicide Squad. And then this one came out right before everything shut down, but Hellions number one. I have the Havoc cover by Wills Portacio. Wills Portacio was a uh, one of my favorite artists from the 80s. He um, started to do comic books right around the same time as Jim Lee. Um, they were both doing X-Men for a while there, but I'm a huge fan of Wills Portacio. I think he's Filipino also. So very, very awesome there. Havoc. Havoc is one of my uh, favorite X-Men, believe it or not. Um, very underrated X-Men. X-Man. <clears throat> but I'm a huge fan of Havoc. Here's my Atomic Empire unboxing. So I got lots of cool new comic books, some bags and boards. The only thing I didn't open was that Hurricane Helms. I got seven minutes left. Let me go ahead and uh, pop this one open while I look at the comic books. The Suicide comics are funny, Star Chris says. Uh, is that Thor comic based on the Disney Store exclusive Thor Marvel Select? I don't think so. Um, Keanu Reeves for Johnny Blaze Ghost Rider, Kato says. I could see that. I could see uh, Keanu Reeves playing a good Johnny Blaze. I still have Nicolas Cage burned into my head as Johnny Blaze. <laughs> Um, I thought that the guy that uh, was on Agent, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. that played um, Robbie Reyes, Ghost Rider, I thought he did a really good job. I like um, his portrayal. So once again, this is the Chase version, I believe, according to Ringside Collectibles. Ringside Collectibles has the black boot version for sale, but not this one. I think this one is the Chase version. So I was pretty happy to find this one. 
stand back. There's a hurricane coming through. Hurricane Helms, Shane Helms, Sugar Shane, known in the late days of WCW. The Vertebreaker, which was one of my favorite finishing moves in wrestling at the time. But uh, WWE banned it. They wouldn't let him do it. I actually met uh, Shane Helms. I met him, I think, in Columbus, Ohio. And I asked him about the Vertebreaker. And he said that, I said, I really wish that they didn't outlaw that move. And he goes, well, I actually do it on house shows. Uh, so I thought that was pretty cool that he did the Vertebreaker on house shows. I don't know why they would let a wrestler do something on a house show, but not uh, on TV. That's kind of weird. But here is the Hurricane Helms, Shane Helms, master of the Vertebreaker. He is a comic book fan. I think he collects action figures. He might be watching this right now. What's up, Shane Helms, if you're watching this? I just bought your figure, and it's freaking awesome. And you're going to be uh, one of the first ones that I have on my Attitude Era shelf. Uh, who's my favorite Ghost Rider? Um, probably Johnny Blaze. Although I did, I was uh, kind of big in uh, the Danny Ketch era in the 90s. I liked the way he looked. Where did you find that hurricane? This was found at Target. Um, I actually stupidly passed on, uh, they had a Target exclusive Cassius Ono NXT figure. And uh, I didn't know how rare that figure is. And I passed on it. I just left it there. And I looked it up and that figure sells for like over $100. Um, and I don't think we're ever going to get another Cash Sono figure. So that might have been my only opportunity to pick that one up. Norman Reedus is Johnny Blaze. That would be a good casting. I mean, everyone knows that he's big into like motorcycles and stuff. He's a good actor. That would be a good casting, actually. I like that a lot. Um, I like that a lot, Josh Rowe. Good choice. Uh, Star Chris is Batman or Superman. Got to go Batman. I've been a Batman fan uh, the longest. I like Superman, but um, I'm just, I like Batman. I just read Batman. I just read Detective Issue 1000 this morning. That's a big book. That's a $10 book. I finished that one. And for those that are not aware, if you play the video game series Arkham Knight, there is a character called Arkham Knight. And he is actually in the comic books now. He is part of the DC proper. I don't know who it is because I just finished issue 1000. But issue 1000 is a collection of short stories and stuff. And then at the very, very end of issue 1000, Detective Comics, they introduced the... So he's in the comic books. I still have to read issues 1001 and 1002. And I'm, I'm not sure how many other issues he's in. But Daddy. yes. Um, um, that's Lewis Hill is watching the TV. Oh, okay, cool. Why is that cool? Um, I, I don't really know how to respond. Jesse, who's Jesse V? Um, remember that time where, um, you said that, um, I can't allow to watch that because it, I, it's a creepy intro. Oh, just because I didn't want you to be scared. Oh. Yeah. If you're not scared of it, you can watch it. I don't think it's that bad. I'll, I'll watch Jesse V and see if it's uh, appropriate for you. Okay. That's why I'm scared of ghosts. That's why I'm scared to be sleeping in my own bed. Probably because of Jesse V videos. I still. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, I don't even. I completely lost my train of thought. All I all I am thinking about right now is Jesse V scary intros and videos. What was I talking about? Superman and Batman? Um, Batman. I like Batman. I love the Batman family. I love Batman. I love all the Robins. I love freaking Jason Todd. I love uh, Nightwing. I love freaking Damien. I love Batman. I love the Batman villains. Those are some of my favorite villains. Here's a better question for you guys right now in the, in the chat. Ready? Do you prefer Batman villains or Spider-Man villains? Weigh in in the chat. Let me know what you prefer. Uh, Havoc and Uncanny Avengers was on. He was very cool. He was the, the leader, I think, for a while in Uncanny Avenger. Uh, Ionicus. Uh, we got one vote for... So Darth Goody says Spider-Man villains. Lord Luigi says Batman Rogues Gallery are number one. We just got a bunch of votes for Spider-Man villains. Dennis Simone, David Big Dog Ramey, Cody uh, Mox, 
MCT Dog says Spider-Man. Jeffrey Lane says Batman. Bubba French says Batman. Country Club, very good point. Batman villains are more entrenched in pop culture. Ionicus says Spider-Man. Another two more Batmans. Spider-Man all day. It's a toss-up. I have Batman Detective Comics 1000 signed by Peter Tomasi. Uh, people are voting on Batman or Spider-Man. It's kind of it's kind of 50 from what I can tell between Batman villain. Because you got Batman, you got Joker on Batman, you got Bane, Riddler, Penguin, Catwoman. Throw Harley Quinn in there. Clayface. Two-Face. Who am I forgetting? Hush. There's so many Batman villains. Spider-Man villains, you got some good ones. Green Goblin. Venom. Hobgoblin. Dr. Octopus. Um, Carnage. Sandman. Hydro-Man. Uh, you also got, thank you, Amateur Twiner, Scarecrow, Killer Croc. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of great villains on both sides. Red Hood, Mad Hatter, Lizard. Uh, CN is not a fan of Joker. Bat Venom 2 trailer has just come out. Si what? Glenn Broadhurst said Venom, Venom 2 trailer just came out 16 seconds ago. OMG. Well, um, I have passed an hour, so I'm going to definitely watch that. Hopefully it's a real trailer and not like a fan-made trailer. But I'm really excited for that. If that's if Venom 2 trailer has just dropped, I'm really freaking excited about that. Uber Hulk is here. Hey, Cincy, you're so fine. You blow my mind. Hey, Cincy. <laughs> Thanks, Uber Hulk. Uh, Shredder is a bit. Yes, he, can, he technically is now. Shredder from TMNT is technically a Batman villain now, thanks to that movie. Um, but hey, guys, that was it. That it was uh, my lunch hour. Thanks for joining. I'll see you guys on Wednesday. I have more stuff to show you. I have more Marvel Legends. I have another box from of comics from 80s comics. I have a box from Big Bad Toy Store. I have more wrestling figures to show you. Um, I don't know if I showed you this one already, but here's the Hurricane once again. And there's the first two figures in my Attitude Era shelf. But uh, that's it, guys. I got to head out. I got to get back to work. Uh, but thanks for joining. And uh, check out my Whisper Challenge video. It's going to go up on YouTube later on today. I hope you enjoy it. It has nothing to do with collecting other than the fact that Tay-Tay is wearing a Baby Yoda shirt. It's all just a fun kind of vlog thing that we did that, as a family. And it was just a lot of fun. So check it out. Adios for now. I'll see you guys Wednesday. And have fun collecting.